Good morning, I'm Sally Bidolf. It's been a night of celebration for Manchester City fans after the team etched its place in history with an extraordinary win against Inter Milan in Istanbul. Pep Guardiola's squad have completed the treble, winning the Premier League, FA Cup and now the Champions League. They're the first English Premier League club to do so since Manchester United in 1999. Natalia Hoquera has more. Collective euphoria. Manchester City fans had jubilant celebrations at home as their club clinched the historic treble after a 1-0 victory over Inter Milan. Fantastic, I've waited 60 years to see that. It was a tough game, they made it hard, but I think, you know, if you look at the chances created, I think we were sort of there and we were on it. It was a tense match, with Inter Milan defending resolutely for large periods of the game. But it wasn't until the 68th minute that City took the lead with a final strike from Rodri. Rodri! Manchester City lead in the Champions League final! A memorable night for the lucky fans who watched the final in Istanbul. City have won the treble! Unbelievable. It's really Amazing. emotional. A lot of grown men in there, seeking each other out, grabbing each other in tears. It's like, it's been a long time. I'm not going to lie, it's, it's probably the worst performance they've had all season. It it's not been a good performance, half. but it doesn't matter because we won, so it doesn't matter, does it? So. Never <laughs> cried. It's the first time I've cried <laughs> since I was about four. It's been a long time coming. <coughs> I'm, I'm 59. I've been a City supporter since I was a little kid. Yes! And we've made it. We've done it. We are champions of the world. And it's amazing. And there were, of course, some very happy scenes in the changing room too. I want to follow you everywhere. Now with the Premier League, FA Cup and now Champions League trophies in their hands, this team and their supporters will have lots to celebrate as they parade through Manchester City tomorrow. Natalia Horquera, ITV News. Labour and the Lib Dems have called for a snap election after Rishi Sunak found himself three MPs down in the space of 24 hours. Former Culture Secretary Nadine Doris was the first to go before Boris Johnson quit late on Friday over the Partygate report. His longtime ally, Nigel Adams, then stepped down yesterday. This morning, Mr Johnson's supporter, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, said he could easily get back into Parliament at the next election. Turning to international news now, and Ukraine's president has confirmed that the country's anticipated counteroffensive against Russia has begun. In a press conference alongside Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Vladimir Zelensky said defensive actions are taking place, but he wouldn't say to what extent. In the past few weeks, there has been an escalation of fighting in the southern and eastern parts of the country. Ukrainian troops are believed to have advanced in these areas, and there are reports they've carried out long-range strikes on Russian targets. Donald Trump has made some extraordinary claims in his first public appearance since he was officially charged with stashing classified documents at his Florida resort. The former president told a crowd in North Carolina the charges against him were ridiculous and baseless, and he accused the FBI and the Justice Department of election interference as he campaigns for a second term in office. This vicious persecution is a travesty of justice. You're watching Joe Biden try to jail his leading political opponent. Think of it. This is like third world country stuff. Trying to put his opponent, who's leading him by a lot, wants to put him in jail. An amber weather warning remains in place for much of England today, with the UK Health Security Agency saying everyone should take care in the hot weather, not just the vulnerable. Temperatures are expected to exceed 30 degrees again, meaning the health service could come under pressure. Yesterday, temperatures reached 32.2 degrees in Surrey, making it the hottest day of the year so far. Thunderstorms are also expected later. There's a yellow weather warning in place for that. And the hot weather should also continue well into next week. Well, that's all from us for now. I'll be back with the lunchtime news at quarter past 12. Till then, enjoy your morning and the sunshine. Bye-bye.